In just a few short weeks, we'll be getting the remastered Mass Effect trilogy complete in one package with all its DLC. Well, almost all of its DLC. In this video, we'll be exploring an overlooked DLC campaign that will not be in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Of course, I'm talking about the 2009 expansion to Mass Effect 1 called Pinnacle Station. We'll be taking a look at the story and gameplay for this DLC and discussing why it's being excluded from BioWare's upcoming remaster. Keep watching to discover all about this forgotten DLC. What's up everyone? Big Dan here. Before we begin, I have a bunch of different Mass Effect trilogy guides and lore videos on my channel, so if you're interested in seeing more, hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Pinnacle Station was originally released in August 2009 as the second expansion to the original Mass Effect game. Development for the expansion was outsourced to a Boston-based company called Demiurge Studios, and thus, a team of mass holes was recruited to make a Mass Effect DLC. Herein lies the reason for its exclusion from Mass Effect Legendary Edition. When Bioware began development on the remaster, they discovered they no longer had the source code for Pinnacle Station. They tried reaching out to everyone they knew who was connected with the project and eventually obtained a source code package from the studio. But unfortunately, the data they received was corrupted. This meant that in order to include Pinnacle Station in Legendary Edition, Bioware would have needed to rebuild the whole thing from scratch, which they estimated would take around six months of development time. In the end, they decided to scrap it and finish Mass Effect Legendary Edition without including Pinnacle Station. When I learned that Pinnacle Station was developed by another studio, my first thought was, oh, it all makes sense now, because Pinnacle Station has a completely different feel to it than any other content in the Mass Effect trilogy, and not necessarily in a good way. Bioware's games are known for their stories, character development, and choices that the player can explore. Well, you can forget all about that when you play Pinnacle Station, because there's basically no storyline or character development in this expansion. The DLC begins with an invitation to Commander Shepard to travel to a Spectre military training facility on Pinnacle Station. The station is run by Admiral Ahern, a decorated Alliance officer and veteran of the First Contact War. Ahern will direct us to speak with the Solarian Ocran, who will give us an overview of the station's combat simulator. This is the core gameplay of the DLC, completing combat simulation trials and trying to obtain the top score in each category. There are four different combat trials, which Ocran gives us the rundown on. Capture, Survival, Hunt, and Time Trial. I assume the enemies are also holographic? No. Our operatives train in a simulator by killing real, actual people. They're simulated. But I hear the kinetic slugs hurt just the same. What am I supposed to be doing in these simulations? That depends on the combat mode. We have time trial, capture, hunt, and survival modes. What are the capture mode objectives? Capture all designated control points as quickly as possible. The faster you capture all the control points, the higher your score. What's survival mode all about? Fend off waves of enemies for as long as possible. When the squad leader goes down, the mission ends. The longer you survive, the higher your score. What's the goal in the hunt mode? Defeat as many enemies as you can before the countdown timer reaches zero. You get additional time for every enemy you defeat. The more enemies you kill, the higher your score. What's my mission in time trial mode? You and your squad must defeat all enemies as quickly as possible. The quicker you defeat all the hostiles, the higher your score. Out of the four challenges, I would have to say that capture was probably my favorite one. Hunt was pretty fun too, but stressful when enemies weren't spawning in fast enough. Survival was a bit of a slog. And time trial was decent too. While you're doing the trials, Ahern will update you on your progress over the comms and roast you if you're struggling, saying things like, There's no award for most time shot. Sorry, Shepard, but there's no award for most time shot. There are also four different maps, many of which are very similar to locations in the base game. There's Tropical, which is essentially Vermeer, Volcanic, Subterranean, and a warehouse. Each combat simulation is available on three of the maps. The warehouse map is only used in the time trial challenge, while the others are reused on multiple simulations. Once you've completed your first trial, you'll be treated to a brief cutscene with the big bad of the DLC, a grumpy Turian named Vadinos. 
Back off, Fidinos. I haven't done anything wrong. If you've tampered with government equipment, Brian, I'll have you thrown in the stockade. What seems to be the problem? Get lost, Shepard. This doesn't concern you. Vidinos is just mad because a human beat his record. Shut your mouth, hollow jockey. Brian says he scored highest in missions from multiple combat modes. No human's ever done that. He clearly cheated. I could beat any of those scores. Without cheating. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be entertaining to watch you try. Tell you what, Shepard. You beat my record and Bryant won't spend the rest of the competition in the stockade. Hell, if you even come close, I'll give you my weapon. I look forward to the challenge. I suppose many humans find failure fun. If so, then this is your lucky day. I hope Bryant has something to read. He'll be in that stockade for a long time. After this, my mind started racing about story possibilities. Because, you know, it's a Mass Effect game, so the story's gotta be there at some point, right? No. Maybe Vadinos will stage a coup and try to take over the station in protest for getting cheated by a human. And maybe this will tie in some elements of the First Contact War, with Shepard trying to smooth over relations between the Turians and humans and restore order on the station. But no, nothing like that happens. You just beat Vadinos' scores and he gives you a new gun of your choice as a reward. That's literally it. I chose the assault rifle, which I used as my main gun for the rest of my playthrough. I'll get to the bottom of this soon enough. Bryant is clear. Keep your smug grin to yourself. I'm out of here. Not before I get that weapon. Fine. But I expect remuneration when I expose your fraudulent win for what it was. I'll take that assault rifle. Go ahead. Thing's a piece of garbage anyway. Enjoy the burn when it blows up in your hand. Once you've posted first place in all 12 challenge and location combinations, Ahern will give you a rundown on his super special Spectre simulation that virtually reenacts a mission he experienced during the First Contact War. It's a reenactment of one of my missions. We held off an ambush of Turian assault troops back during the Contact War, just me and a small squad. I haven't finished programming it yet, but it's close enough. You can try it if you like. Keep going. Rules are simple. Survive until you're picked up, if you can. You'll be ridiculously outnumbered. No real cover to speak of. It's the ultimate worst case scenario. Of course, it'll only be a simulation. Then up the difficulty. I don't want it easy. You got balls, Shepard, but it's still just a simulation. Even our best VIs aren't as good as the real thing. And turn off the safeties. No safeties? Highest level of difficulty? You'll never do it. And then I'll have to explain how a Spectre died on my station. What do you want to bet? A wager, huh? Yeah. Okay. I've got a nice little retirement place on Entice. I never go there, and I don't plan on retiring anytime soon. It's yours if you can beat it. And what are you wagering? My life. Right. Do you really want the safeties off? If you die, it's getting logged as user error. I'm not losing my job over this. What's this place like? Quiet, remote. You've practically got the whole planet to yourself. I got a brochure from Exogeny, and they dropped a prefab down on Entice for me, here in the Argus Row cluster. The weather is terrible, but they tell me it's a red paradise, whatever that means. What do you say? Set it up. Talk to Ocran. I'll make sure he gets the new settings. I'd say good luck, but you'll need a lot more than that. All right, get ready, boys. The Turians will be here any second. Uh, guys? Yeah, so when I first booted up the simulation, the game bugged out and didn't spawn any enemies. So I reloaded a save, and I gotta say, yeah, this challenge is pretty tough. You'll be swarmed on all sides by enemies, and they are aggressive. You won't be able to remain in cover in one spot for too long before a hologram runs up right behind you. Your squad mates will also likely go down like a sack of bricks, so be sure to keep that metagel handy and use Unity to revive them. You'll have to survive for five whole minutes before successfully completing the trial. After it's all said and done, you get a snazzy new apartment as a reward. The apartment is pretty dope, 
though there really isn't much of a reason to visit here after your first time. Unlike the apartment you'll receive in Mass Effect 3's Citadel DLC, this apartment is out in the middle of nowhere in the Argus Row Cluster. In addition to the apartment, you'll also be able to purchase special weapon shipments that were initially intended for Admiral Ahern. Obtaining all shipments will run 300,000 credits of in-game money. Unfortunately, the only way to discover what weapon or item you will receive is to just purchase them. In my case, I received a Biotic Amp, which I couldn't equip on my main character, an Omni Tool, which I also couldn't equip on my main character, and a set of Krogan Armor, which was useless for me because this was the run where I didn't recruit Rex. Check out my video on that, by the way, if you haven't seen it already. So this set of rewards was a complete bust for me. Ah well, the apartment was pretty cool, I guess, and so was the assault rifle I got from Vodinos. When it was all said and done, the entire Pinnacle Station DLC took me a little over an hour to complete. Overall, I'd say the experience was alright. It's not a can't-miss experience by any stretch of the imagination and it's definitely the weakest DLC in the entire trilogy. But if you enjoy the combat of Mass Effect 1, and you like this style of cookie-cutter combat challenges, then you might enjoy Pinnacle Station. At the end of the day, I'm not too broken up over the fact that this isn't in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. To be honest, I would probably just skip the DLC anyway, even if it were included, since I truly feel like I've already experienced everything it has to offer. So there you have it, the story of Pinnacle Station, Mass Effect's Forgotten DLC. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.